while we're on the topic of eating on celebrations and holidays, I actually have three tactics that I'll use in and out, just depending on the situation, depending on how I feel. Like I said earlier, nowadays I just eat. I don't really count calories on days of celebrations, but you know, there'll be times where maybe the holiday is a little bit longer that during some meals when there's not much going on, I might want to track my calories or my macros. And there's a set of strategies that I always turn to if ever needed. And so three strategies on how to eat during celebrations or holidays. Number one is the one that we've been talking about, which is just eat, you know, just eat, just celebrate, celebrate naturally. Don't purposely eat more or less and focus on getting back on track after the celebration or after the holidays. And it doesn't matter if it's a weekend thing or a day thing or a meal thing, like focus less about, oh my God, what's going to happen during the holiday? I'm going to gain all this holiday weight. Don't focus on that, but focus more on, all right, when the holiday's over, I'm going to get back on track, get my regular routine going again and just go from there. Oh yeah. And, and one thing I really want to remind you is holiday weight is a thing and holiday weight is going to happen. Like if you went on a week holiday where obviously you were not really tracking your food, you're just enjoying yourself and eating whatever is available there. Yeah, there's a high chance you're going to gain some weight and weight doesn't mean fat, right? Weight just means you're eating different stuff. You're likely eating saltier than usual, more carbs than usual. And all these things, they create a lot of water weight. So, you know, when you're back from your holiday and you step on a scale, yeah, prepare to be shocked that it's a number that you don't usually see. That's also the thing, right? A holiday is not something you usually go on. You go on a holiday once in a while. Because if you're going on a holiday like routinely, like let's say every two weeks you're going on a weekend holiday, all right, then maybe that's the time that you want to put a more strategic strategy into that holiday since it occurs so frequently. But if it's the kind of holiday I'm thinking about that I'm talking about, which is, you know, we have it once or twice in a year, two to three times in a year, like 365 days, we took 20 days off. However, we split that 20 days, you know, that kind of thing. There's really just no need to have any kind of specific strategy for it, except to go enjoy yourselves and then come back. And so back to the holiday weight thing, it is expected to gain a little bit of weight when you come back from your holiday, immediately after your holiday. It's expected. If you go on a holiday and you come back the exact same weight, like, you know, your your scale numbers are still roughly the same as your normal routine, I call that a huge lottery win. Like, you you enjoyed yourself and you didn't gain weight? Man, that's, you're either really good at intuitive eating now, or maybe you didn't go hard enough during your holidays. But either way, after a holiday, always expect the scale to go up. It's super normal. And if it does go up, expect it to go down really, really quickly after you've been back on track for a week or two. Like these days, I get a lot of messages and emails saying that, oh my God, you know, Christmas, New Year's, there's no end to it. And I came back from my holidays, I gained three to five kilos. And I have to keep reminding these people that, hey, that's okay. Three to five kilos after the holidays, that's very, very normal. All you got to do is get back on track. That three to five kilos, you're going to see that slowly go away over the next two weeks. For some people, it'll go away really quickly. For some people, it'll take a little bit more time but roughly at most, I'd say three to four weeks, you're back at your weight before your holidays and you're continuing to progress towards your weight goals. And really, instead of worrying about all the numbers, the key is after the holidays, don't bring the holiday habit back into your regular routine. Like let's say on holiday, every meal you were having two scoops of ice cream because that was just holiday mode, holiday mood. That's what you enjoyed. But your regular routine never even had ice cream. So don't make it suddenly you come back from your holidays that, okay, on top of your regular routine, you're going to have those two scoops of ice creams every single day as well. That's what's going to mess you up, right? And it's not like you can't have the ice cream. Let's say you really enjoyed that. That was really heaven for you to having two scoops of ice cream after every meal. Well, you can try to incorporate it slowly into your regular routine. You could strategize around it. Maybe you don't have it every day. Well, you could have it every day, but you just have to eat less somewhere in your meal to make room for it. Two scoops of ice cream is roughly what? Three to 400 calories. I mean, that's very doable. You could, you could definitely save three to four calories somewhere and fit the scoops of ice cream in and still be in a calorie deficit. Or of course you could just do it less frequently. How about do it twice a week or once a week? That's super doable. Like imagine this three to 400 extra calories a week. So let's say that's 400, 400 divided by seven, roughly 57. So that's additional 57 calories per day. There's a huge chance that you just add two scoops of ice cream once a week that nothing changes in your diet. You'll still likely be in a calorie deficit and still lose weight. Hey, but if you want, to play with the numbers. You want to make sure you're on the same number as your regular routine while having the weekly two scoops of ice cream. That's just 57 calories you got to deal with on a per day basis. That's like what? A quarter cup of rice? Eat a quarter cup of rice less every day and you earn your two scoops of ice cream. The math is that simple. And it's like I always said, right? The math, the actually doing it, like doing it on the day itself, that's the easy part. Like losing weight is easy in that sense. The hard part is keeping it up. The hard part is making yourself be disciplined to keep to these
these day-to-day -day rules. But of course, I want to highlight to you that, you know, a lot of things is possible. Like it doesn't have to be miserable at all. You could absolutely be so enjoying life and so progressing towards your goals, both at the same time, especially if you have realistic expectations, especially if you know that there's a hundred percent chance that you can do this. It's just going to take some hard work. It's going to be kind of uncomfortable in the beginning, but it does get better over time. And so back to the three strategies, right? Strategy number one was just eat whatever you want and get back on track. That's it. Simple, easy. Don't need to think too much. And so strategy number two would be saving calories from the week. And I used to do this a lot more a couple of years back, pre-COVID years. But then, I don't know, maybe it's because of 2020 and all that's happened in the past few years that I just started to be more like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to go on holiday mode and get back on track. I'm not going to be so picky with my digits. But of course, it's also, I don't really have a weight goal, right? I already hit my weight goal. I'm totally fine choosing life over the scale temporarily. But in any case, strategy number two is save calories from the week. Meaning like, let's say you have a week weekend event, right? Let's say you have a wedding to attend to on a weekend where there's a birthday party on a weekend. And let's say, let's say it's Saturday, Saturday, you know, that's going to be a big day. There's going to be a lot of good food and you want to kind of still stick to your weekly calories and not go too overboard while you enjoy yourself on Saturday. So let's say Monday to Friday, you save a hundred, 200 calories every day, eating a hundred, 200 calories less every day. By doing so, you're saving 500 to a thousand calories in those five days that you can then spend on Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, that means if you ate over your normal quota, 500 to 1,000 calories, it's actually still evens out because your weekly calories would be the same because you save calories on the weekdays. It's a lot of math. You don't have to work out the exact numbers, but just knowing that if you're eating less during the week to eat more during the weekend, that is totally a fine strategy as well. And that totally can help you progress towards your goals while not worrying too much about overeating. Because let's say you're eating 1,500 every day. That's the number that you're trying to hit that puts you in a calorie deficit. And and that's just your everyday numbers. And so for Monday to Friday, if you eat 1,200 or 1,300 on Saturday, you could be eating 2,000, 2,500, and you'd still be kind of on point. You'd still be in a calorie deficit. Even if that day you ate up to 3,000, 4,000, that's, you know, at best, you probably just that week is maintenance for you. It's not a big deal at all, especially if you planned it. If you planned it, you know this is going to happen. Things like weddings, birthdays, they don't happen all the time. It's like your friends aren't going to get married every weekend and you're not going to have birthday parties every weekend as well. It's a, it's a once in a while thing, once in a lifetime thing, really. I mean, if you're celebrating somebody's birthday last year versus this year, even if it's the same person, it's a different celebration. It's different things to be happy about, and it's just not worth missing out on. But in any case, saving calories from the week can help ease your mind, can help you kind of still be relatively on point for that week and, you know, get back on track the week after. Simple, simple strategy. And so strategy number three would be one meal a day. And I think a lot of us have done this just not knowing it's actually one meal a day. And so let's say you're going for an all you can eat, right? Whether it's a buffet or whatever it is, how many of you have starved yourself the whole day because you knew there was a buffet or a all you can eat at dinner and then at dinner just go all out? I'm guilty. I've done that a lot of times. You know, back in my morbidly obese days, I was also doing that already. And I heard a lot of family and friends would all do the same when we were all going to this all you can eat places. And that's actually a very, very valid strategy. It's like if you're eating 1,500 calories a day and and usually you split it up into three meals, 500 for breakfast, 500 for lunch, 500 for dinner. If, you know, you decided, oh, dinner's going to be a pretty big. So I'm going to save the 500 from breakfast. I'm going to save the 500 from lunch. And I'm going to slap on 1,005 for dinner. That works. That's totally fine. That's a way to make sure you don't overeat. It's like in my head, calorie counting is this really fun numbers game. What makes it fun for me is realizing that, oh my God, it actually works this way. This is no different than budgeting finances, like budgeting how much you're going to spend this week. It's all just numbers. It's all just planning ahead. But in any case, OMAD works. One meal a day does work when you kind of don't want to throw away the day. You kind of want to have something in check, but you also want to enjoy that one meal, that one celebration, that one whatever that you have in that day, not eating for the whole day and just banking it all on one meal. Totally works. Totally fine. And so I hope those three strategies can help you just to have an ease of mind when you're on holiday and celebrating, because I think I feel this is going to this feels so cliche coming out of my mouth, but it's you know, life short, man, like life's really short is not worth worrying about calories during celebrations, during holidays and all that. It just, it just isn't. If you really counted, right, if you mapped out your calendar on how much celebrations and holidays there are that you 
you actually celebrate like don't put in all the small things right like today is hot dog day okay celebrate like tomorrow is sing a song to siblings day like don't call those things celebrations we're talking about big ones like you know weddings birthdays milestones achievements those go all out but you know don't go all out on like you know hey did you know today is dogs day where the world celebrates dogs it's like if you're gonna do that like unfortunately i think there's a celebration of something every single day then you know all these strategies just ain't gonna work so not for those things for the bigger things for the things you're actually gonna celebrate things like this things like you know year of the rabbit or christmas or new year's but anyways you get the point we